Hi guys, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started writing C++ programs using the CodeBlocks IDE. Okay, so this video is just going to be about showing you where to go, what to download, how to run the installer, and you know, create a project to write your first program, compile it, and where to find the source code file and the executable file once it's been um, built, right? Once you once you compiled the thing. Um, if you want to actually learn what the code is about that I'm going to write, or what it means, or how to write C++ programs, then check out my other C++ videos. Check out my C++ playlist. I've got I think a hundred C++ videos in that playlist now. Or better yet, take one of my courses. Right? at the universities I teach. That's what these videos are for, after all, is to primarily support my um, students, right? So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so you'll want to punch up codeblocks.org. I really like Codeblocks as an IDE for new computer science students because, you know, it's, it's, it's pared down, right? It has just enough features for you to get started, but it doesn't, it's not as feature-rich as a Visual Studio or next code is and so a lot of that extra stuff that those IDEs have they tend to get in the way and confuse new computer science students and so I think overall CodeBlocks is just easier to use and it's really nice that it is um, cross-platform right so you can it's gonna have the same look and feel roughly on Windows on um, Mac on Linux doesn't matter it's all gonna generally work the same on those platforms and it's just I think it's just easier to use for new students so when you're ready to go, go ahead and click Downloads, okay, and uh, then you can just go and click on Download the Binary Release, and that's going to take you down to some options here. Again, it's available on Windows, Linux, or Mac OS, so I'm using a Windows machine, so I'm going to click on that, and then there's going to give you a bunch of options here, and I'm just going to go with the top one right here. This should work for the vast majority of you, and so I'll just click on SourceForge.net because I like SourceForge. Okay. And that's going to take you to your download screen, which I'm sure you know how to download software, right? So that'll pop up and then you can go ahead and click save file and save that to some location on your computer that's convenient. So I'll go ahead and save it on, well, I'll put it in its own little folder here, I think, for the purposes of this video. video. Okay, um, so I'll go ahead and save it in here and we'll click on save. Right. So that's going to download. And uh, when it's done, okay, you can go find it wherever you decide to save it. I saved it in a folder called video. And so there's what your setup file looks like. And then you can double click on that. And that'll start your installer. Okay. And you got a wizard. So I'm going to click on next. License agreement, yes. Right. And then uh, it's gonna give you some options for plugins and stuff. Um, you can choose from you know this drop down here, or you can um, check you know what you want. I don't want any of this extra stuff here. I don't need it, so I'm just gonna go with the default install, right? And then we'll click next. And depending on you know how fast your machine is, is gonna, you know, it'll take some, some time, more time on some machines than others to do the install. I mean, you've been installing software, uh, software before. So you can use the, de the uh, default destination folder or specify some other location you want. I'm just gonna go with the default for this demo. Click install. Do you wanna run code blocks now? Yeah, sure, why not? Right. Or if you decide not to, then you can, you know, do it start it later from your start menu or whatever right so here we go we're all loaded up and um, we can go back and finish the installer by clicking next and then finish fine okay so here we are right this is this is this is it so let's go ahead and show you how to write that program and um, I'll show you a couple different ways of doing it one is a more traditional way that most IDEs kind of force you to do now and then another is kind of a shortcut way but um, you can go up to under file, select new, and then project, okay? And then you're gonna have this pop-up here that'll allow you to choose a bunch of different templates um, for setting stuff up. And basically what these different templates do is they 
enable you to create a project where there's some code that's already written for you. There's some scaffolding code, I guess you could say, for particular uses. But since we're going to write all of our stuff from complete scratch in my classes. So I tell them to choose empty projects. That way, the only thing that's in your project that's part of your actual program is going to be um, the code that you actually type out. So we'll click on empty project and we'll select go or we'll click go. All right, and then we'll hit next for the empty project. And then here we can specify the name of the project. Now what this is going to be is this is going to be the name of a folder where all of your project related files are going to go. That's going to include your source code file as well as the executable, you know, what your compiled, the program that gets compiled based off of your source code. And then also some byproducts of the compilation process. So let's go ahead and we'll just call this, um, I don't know, we'll call it uh, alpha. Okay, and then you can click and say where you want the, the project folder to get created. So remember I created a, a folder on my desktop called video just for this video. So I'll select that folder. And that's where this new folder called alpha is gonna go. We'll select next. You can leave this default here. If you have multiple compilers on your machine, then you can go through here and select different compilers. But usually this default's gonna work for you just fine. Um, you can play around with these once you get a little bit more advanced, but for now we'll just, since this is an intro video, we'll leave both of these on. Click finish. Okay, and that's gonna create your project. Now you'll notice the management window over here, there's the name of it, right? But we don't have any source code files yet, so we have to go add um, a source code file to our project. So you can go over here and say file new, empty file, okay? And so then you get a pop-up that says, do you want to add this new file in the active project? It has to be saved first, yes. Okay, and then see where it says save in, that's the name of my project, it matches, okay? Now here you're gonna name your source code file. So I'll just name this um, main.cpp, okay? And then I'll click save. Okay, now go ahead and leave the defaults. Again, once you get more advanced, you'll be able to make more informed decisions, but this is gonna work just fine for us to leave them as the defaults. Now you'll see that we've got our text editor now where we can type our code. And if you hold control down, you can mouse wheel up and mouse wheel down to zoom in and out. If you hit the uh, plus over here, you can see um, a folder here and then you open that up and that's your sources for the project, right? Because a lot of times when you're building a um, program, you're not going to have just one source code file, you have a whole bunch. And so this is a way of organizing all the source code files in your actual program. Collectively, it's referred to as a project, I guess you could say. But this is it. This is what we just made, the main.cpp. So I'm going to go ahead and just make a hello world program. Okay. And again, if you want to know what all this code means, then check out my other videos or take my class. All right. This video is just about showing you how to get code blocks running. Okay, so see out, hello world. Yeah, I know, I know. For those of you who are more advanced, don't use using namespace STD. I know it's for a beginner's course. It's just easier and less confusing to do it this way. All right, so once you've typed your code, hit control S to save it. Okay, and when you do that, this little asterisk that was up here is gonna disappear indicating that you saved it. Because whenever you type anything, so that asterisk shows up, that indicates that you've edited your um, source code file, but you haven't saved it yet. So control S to save. Now up here you got these three icons. One of these is build. All that does is compile your program, but doesn't run it. Okay, now run, what that does is that will just run the latest version that you compiled, but won't compile the code. Okay, it runs something that you've already compiled previously. Now this guy right here, this third icon here, does them both. All right, so I'm gonna hit those. I'm gonna hit that one. And so that compiles the code and then runs the program. Then you can see there's the output, hello world. Okay, now I'm gonna put a pause in here because I'm gonna show you something here in a second. And I'm gonna need this pause to uh, be able to show you what um, I wanna show you. So see how I made an edit and that asterisk came back? So I'm gonna hit Control key and then S at the same time. That's gonna save it. Okay, and uh, I can rebuild it and run it at the gear and the arrow, and then hello world's there, and then you can see it's gonna be stuck there until I hit enter. Okay, and that was for that pause that I put in, and then there's the pause that code blocks does automatically, so I'm gonna hit control, or uh, hit enter again. Now, let's go take a look at the contents of that folder. Okay, so this is my video folder where I downloaded code blocks, and also where I put the project. So you can see there's the project name, right? So for projects that you create, you get a folder 
that has the same name as the project. Let's open it and see what's inside. Double click on that. Now you can see there's a bunch of stuff here that I didn't create, right? All I did was I made main.cpp. That was the file that I created. But you see there's other stuff in here as well. And that was created by CodeBlocks. So you see that it says alpha.cpp. That's a, a, a configuration file, I guess you could say, for the CodeBlocks project, okay? That's not your actual program. That doesn't contain your code. Now, OBJ and BIN. OBJ contains some files that are a byproduct of the compilation process, but if you open up bin, you'll see that there's a folder in there called debug. If you did double click on that, you'll see that there is a file in there called alpha.exe. So that's got the same name as your project with .exe on the end, and that is your program. That's what we just compiled from our source code, right? That's the end product. This is, this is what we built. So if you double click on this from within Windows, you know, your program runs, right? And you see hello world up there and it's waiting because of that cn.get line. That's my little pause. If I didn't put that in there, then the window would just flash open really quick and then close real quick because the program's done running, right? So I put the cn.get in there. Just keep that window open so you can see the output. Hit enter, program's over. So that's the program. And that's what we created to, to run on our computer. Okay, so if you were a student of mine, and this was a homework assignment, then what you would submit would be this main.cpp file, the source code file. This is a source code file. Now it's just a plain old text file. So, you know, you can view it with anything. There's nothing special about it, you know, just because we created it with code blocks. You could create this exact same file using Notepad, or you could even open it up using Notepad, or if you're on a Mac, use text editor, or whatever, whatever plain old text editor you have. So Notepad's installed on all Windows machines and you can see that look there's my source code file it's just a plain old text file so again if you're a student of mine then this is what you would turn in for your homework okay now that's one way that you can do this another way you can do this let me go ahead and close this project nice thing about code blocks is that you don't have to work around the projects model okay code blocks will allow you just to create a source code file and then compile it that's kind of nice because the way other IDEs work, forcing you to create a new project for every single program you write, it can be confusing, um, you know, especially with Visual Studio because the first source code file that you add to a project in Visual Studio, that's the one that gets compiled. And so when students want to work on their next homework assignment, they just try to create a new source code file and it, you know, it compiles the wrong thing or whatever. You don't have to use projects and code blocks at all, right? So I can just, no project at all, go up to File, New, empty file, right? I didn't, I'm not doing a project first. Okay, empty file. And then it creates a new file in your text editor here, and I can save it. So hit Control S again, for example. Okay, and then put it on my desktop, you know, or I'll put it in that video folder, right? Put it back in the video folder, but I won't, I won't make a whole new project. I won't go to an alpha, I'll just put it right there in the video folder. So I'll say, um, I'll call this um, doggy.cpp and then save. Okay, now from here, I can go ahead and write my program. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I know, using namespace std. Right. And then uh, see out, um, we'll type, uh, what will we type? Wolf, wolf. I guess that's how dogs say hello world. Okay, so you know, get for a pause, hit control S, and now let's build and run it. So you can see there's the wolf wolf. So I didn't have to create a project, right? Um, I can just create the file and compile it. And it's nice because you can have, you can do that multiple times, right? So I can create another one, call it uh, kitty. Call it, yeah, I mean, you know, call it whatever you want. include my stream using namespace std and main. If I had a nickel for every time I typed that crap out, I'd be, well, I wouldn't be talking to you, I'd be rich, right? <laughs> I wouldn't be doing YouTube videos anymore. Um, I wouldn't be teaching anymore, I'd be on a beach somewhere. Meow, meow. Uh, I just pause there and then let's build it and run it. Meow, meow. So, when you do that, it's just whatever active tab you have, right? That's the one that's gonna get compiled. And so that's kind of nice. 
Um, you're not tied to this whole projects idea. Um, it's a little more freeing in that way, in that way. Okay, but now let's go take a look uh, at what got created. So let's go look at um, the files and how to find them. Now remember, I created them in the video folder. Now look at all this stuff here. There's doggy.cpp, but there's no folder for doggy. I didn't create a project, so it's just out there. It's just wherever I put it. Now you'll see there's the program, the uh, executable, doggy.exe. Double click that, woof woof. Okay, doggy.o, that's an object file. That's kind of um, a byproduct of the compilation process, right? So if you're a student of mine, you're turning in your homework, you'd be turning in doggy.cpp, not doggy.o, not doggy.exe, just doggy.cpp. And then here's kitty.cpp along with its uh, executable. All right, so you don't have to use projects is, is the point. It's just whatever tab is active, that's the one that's going to get compiled. Okay, so I think that's everything that I wanted to share with you in this video. And it really is that easy, right? And so just to get started with basic programming for a computer science class, you know, you want to just be able to do your homework or whatever, that's going to get you going, right? And I tell my students, use whatever uh, IDE that you want. It doesn't matter because you're just going to be turning in a source code file to me anyway. They're just tools. And so... You know, if you're if you've always used Visual Studio and you're more comfortable with that, fine, use that. You know, use Xcode, use um, Dev C++, use the command line, use whatever tool you're most comfortable with that makes you the most productive. But I would encourage you to try all kinds of different tools. Again, Code Blocks really great for beginners, I think, because there's less stuff to get in your way. It's less confusing. It's simpler, and it works on any platform. So, uh, you know, what I showed you in this video. You can easily do on your Mac, do on a Linux system, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's going to be great and work for you just fine. It's a great IDE. It's easy to use. It's free. You know, what more could you want? All right. So there's going to be some stuff popping up here. If you like the video, how about a thumbs up? That'd be great. If you thought the video sucked, hey, hit a thumbs down. That's that's it's America, right? You're free to do whatever you want. Uh, you know, feel free to leave comments. Let me know what you thought of the video and um, click subscribe. And check out my C++ playlist if you want to learn more about C++, okay? Anyway, that's everything. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.